One of the biggest challenges to extracting value from AI is data processing. And here to talk about some of the challenges is Nell Swanepoel, AI Solutions Architect at HPE. Nell, thanks for being with us today. Let's talk a little bit about some of those challenges that organizations face when they're trying to incorporate AI. Absolutely. I, uh, we found that the data processing and data access is still one of the largest rate limiters to extracting value from AI for enterprises. And the modern AI models rely much more on multimodal data. So not just traditional tabular data, but also images, free text, audio, even video data. And data engineers and data scientists need a way to effectively and efficiently clean process and transform that data in parallel without having to learn the distributed programming models from traditional HPC. Second challenge that we see organizations face when uh, trying to extract value from AI is trust in their data. So the data engineering community has been adopting software engineering best practices uh, in, in the past few years, which includes data versioning. So software engineers have traditionally been versioning their applications and their source code, and data engineers today need the ability to version their data so that you can track the lineage of your data that's gone into a prediction, for instance. You want to be able to track that data all the way back to the first commit, to the first step in the processing pipeline. And HP has developed a product called machine learning data management software, which brings this capability uh, to data scientists and data engineers. And we'll demo that a little bit later in the segment. So how about ROI? Because a lot of companies are really worried about this new layer. Uh, is that something they should be concerned about? Uh, that's a good question, Clarence. The, um, Building and fine-tuning AI models is an expensive uh, and resource-intensive activity, and there are really two resources that you want to optimize for. One is the skilled data scientist and, and machine learning engineer, and the second is your accelerator cards, so the GPU processing units from NVIDIA, AMD, and, and Intel. And for your data scientists and your machine learning engineers, you want to be able to get them uh, to the highest level of productivity as quickly as possible. And that means giving them the tools to craft experiments using the tool, the, the software libraries and frameworks that they are comfortable with, uh, the ability to track and compare the results from those experiments, uh, the ability to uh, apply effective hyperparameter optimization strategies, and then to also version their models before it gets put into production. Uh, the second resource, as I mentioned, is the GPU accelerators, which is arguably the most expensive compute component in your AI uh, infrastructure stack. And for larger models today, you need a set of GPU accelerators. You uh, most likely are going to be training across multiple GPUs uh, on multiple nodes. And there are some open source software packages out there that would allow a data scientist to parallelize their uh, model training across multiple GPUs in a distributed fashion. But as soon as you are uh, needing to support a group or a team of data scientists that access a shared set of accelerator resources, you need some kind of orchestrator. And that's where our machine learning development environment product comes in. It helps you optimize that model development and fine tuning experience for an enterprise use. And again, we'll demo that in a little bit later in the segment. If a company wants to incorporate generative AI without having to rely on some of the consumer facing LLMs, is that something that they can do as well? Absolutely, Clarence. I, we have encountered this uh, uh, more and more. There are many enterprises that want to and they are enthusiastic about this new paradigm shift of generative AI. Uh, you know, it's showed us that it's possible to interact with a computer in a completely different, much more human-centric natural fashion through this conversational interface. But uh, organizations, uh, especially in highly regulated industries, can't afford to um, hand over their data and their processing to an external service provider. So we bring the ability or we'll provide the ability for these organizations to bring models onto their own IT estate. Uh, and we do that through the use of one of the open source models. So there have been many large language models released in, in, uh, under open source licenses. And we help organizations fine tune those models on industry specific data sets, and then help them to connect those fine tuned models to their internal knowledge repositories. And that provides the large language model experience or the, the chat GPT experience to organizations uh, with 
guardrails and safety nets and ensuring that sensitive information doesn't leave their estate. And the answers returned by these models are sourced from the most up-to-date, accurate uh, sources. Well, let's take a look at the demo. AI solutions engineer Tanky Pomus is here to show us how the product works. So tell us what we're going to see. So basically, this is the interface of uh, the UAC demo that we have developed from scratch using our HP AI software solutions. So it's a very basic demo using financial public data. So we can ask uh, any questions, but this question that is currently being uh, on the screen is very straightforward to understand and to, to better understand uh, how RAG can be helpful. So basically, the base model output for that work is telling that CEO of Deutsche Bank is John Koyan, nothing more. And the fine tune model with RAG uh, is saying Christian Searing. And if you are stuck with, without RAG, actually, you have no way to understand that this information is outdated. Whereas here, you can check below where does this information come from. So basically, it comes from that article that states that Deutsche Bank CEO is Christian Searing. So, and you can click on this, you can see that article, you can see the date, so you can assess whether this information is still relevant or not today. And this entire solution has been developed using two HP AI software solutions. The first one being HP Machine Learning Data Management, MLDM in short, which is a solution for data processing and pipelining. So we can see here, for example, we have cache management articles that we want the RAG model to, to refer. We can inspect the commits, which, which will basically list the content of that repository. Every time we make a change to that data repository, we keep track of the change. Every commit has a unique ID. You can see it has been created on the 16th of January. You can see what was inside. And every time we make a change, we can see what has changed. So basically, this is a very strong solution for uh, data versioning and end-to-end -end, uh, data lineage. And after that, we have many other steps, as you can guess. So that application requires quite a few steps, of course, to, to be uh, working. So we have like a step to prepare the articles to chunks, basically data processing steps that require a YAML file to say, this is the operation, this is um, the data processing step I want to apply to my data. And then we have another output with another type of data with data partially pre-processed so that you can leverage in further steps later on in the pipeline. So this is a very quick overview of our MLDM solution. And then for specifically for um, model training, we have MLDE that we can be used to train deep learning models. And we can start an MLDE job using an MLDM pipeline. So we can see that here, this is the interface of our HP machine learning development environment, MLE in short, which is our solution for deep learning model training, which is very efficient for training large models that require multiple GPUs, potentially on multiple nodes. So this is the interface. Every line that you can see here corresponds to a different um, deep learning model training. We can organize our different experiments in different workspaces. So here we have team one, team two workspace. And we have, for example, project one. And here, each line corresponds to a different deep learning model training. If we focus on any of them, for example, this one, we can see the metrics that it has achieved. We can see the checkpoints that we have saved. Uh, checkpointing is automatic, which is very uh, convenient if you are training um, models that require a long time of processing and you don't want to lose your progress if there is anything that breaks down. So we can see metrics, we can see upper parameters as well. We can do very efficient and very easy straightforward upper parameter optimization with that product. As I mentioned, we have checkpoints. We also have code. So every time we start a model training on MLE, we have the full code that has been uh, saved and is accessible for later um, inspection. And we also have a profiler that allows us to say, to check the system metrics, for example, in that case, we have like quite a lot of GPU free memory, so maybe it makes sense to increase the batch size to make a better use of our, of our GPUs. And finally, we have the logs, potentially on multiple agents, multiple nodes, multiple GPUs. Uh, so basically, really convenient for, for debugging. And this is, again, a very, very quick tour of our MLD solution and MLDM solution. So if you want to learn more, we'll be happy to, to discuss with you further.